Hello, and welcome to my next executive series video. Our topic today is process validation with specific focus on verification and validation deviations. Aaron Snyder here from Quality Systems Explained, where we make quality systems simple for you. Make sure you subscribe to get all the good content we're putting out. Check out the status bar below for an outline of our agenda and stick around to the end to get those bonus questions. Our topic, verification and validation deviations, comes directly from the process validation requirements, which from 820 is 820.75, and from 1345, we're talking about section 7.5.6. Verification and validation deviations in five words. Determine effect on validation integrity. When we execute an installation qualification, an operational qualification, performance qualification. Heck, whenever we do any verification or validation activities, we can have deviations. Deviations can be not following the process. Deviations can be failed acceptance criteria. Deviations can be unexpected things that happen that we weren't expecting to happen. What's important about deviations is that when they happen, we capture them and we follow this four-step process. The first step is document the deviation immediately when it occurs. Second, we need to risk assess and determine the impact on the validity of our verification and validation activities. Third, we need to find the root cause. And then fourth, we need to disposition the deviation and address that root cause. The worst thing we can do is ignore the deviations. Just move on, accept the validation, with that deviation there kind of hiding inside the validation. How do I know this is working? Well, first, when a deviation occurs, it's documented immediately. Second, any changes made to my protocol after that protocol is approved or any activities that are outside of my procedure or my test method, those are treated as deviations. Third, all of my deviations are analyzed the impact on the verification of validation is understood, it's risk assessed. I find the root cause, I address it, and then I ultimately disposition the deviation itself. And then finally, if my deviation is serious enough, I redo the verification of validation activities. So how do I know it's not working? Well, first, changes made to my validation protocols after they are approved, they're not treated as deviations. Second, Deviations are just accepted without any analysis, or they're ignored. Third, deviations aren't documented. And then finally, on really high profile, important validation projects, there's a lot of pressure put on the validation engineers to find an acceptable rationale for accepting a critical or serious deviation because we need to get that product out of the market. So write a rationale for us to move on and accept this deviation. And now for the three bonus questions. Do we have a process for tracking and trending our deviations from process validation? Second, do we have a process, step-by-step -step process for analyzing, investigating, and addressing those deviations? And then finally, how do we analyze and understand the risk that that deviation presents to the integrity of the validation itself? Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment. Send any questions to me at qms.jedi at gmail.com. This is Aaron Snyder from Quality Systems Explained. Making quality systems simple for you.